وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى today I want to uh, give a reminder and a lecture on the issue related to الدعوه الدعوه إلى الله تعالى calling to Allah سبحانه وتعالى what I want to speak about in this بإذن الله الكريم uh, lecture or this uh, majlis is what does it mean to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are the characteristics and the attributes that are required from the person who's calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are the things that the person should stay away from and avoid? وَمَا إِلَى ذَلِكَ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى So by the end of this, إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى You should have an understanding of what it means to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also to know the characteristics and the qualities that are required from you as a da'i. And also to stay away from the things that could cause harm to your da'wah, uh, according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the things that could cause you to deviate, go astray, inshallah ta'ala. I hope I, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bimannihi wa karamihi, that Allah makes this subhanahu wa ta'ala a means to get closer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I also ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he benefits us with what is said, إِنَّهُ وَلِيُّ ذَلِكَ وَالْقَادِرُ عَلَيْهِ The first point, inshallah ta'ala, I want to start by saying is, الدَّعْوَةُ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى is a قَضِيَّةٌ مَنْهَجِيَّةٌ Calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a matter of manhaj, meaning, لَيْسَتْ قَضِيَّةٌ فِقْهِيَّةٌ It's not a fiqhi issue. الدَّعْوَةُ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى is a manhaj issue. What does that mean? It means it is carved on stone, meaning you and I have no place to come and to try and to test. La majala fihi. There is no place for trial and testing. And what I want you to understand, my brothers and sisters, is that the religion is divided into two. Matters which are fundamental issues where the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma' have shown and no one is allowed to come and then to put forward their opinion. Those fundamental issues, my brothers and sisters, bulk of it, the majority of it is in Aqeedah. The bulk of those issues which are uh, clear-cut, fundamental, they are in Aqeedah. Aqeedah, it's based on al-nas wal-ijma'ah. Al-nas means al-kitab wa sunnah and al-ijma'ah. Meaning, matters of Aqeedah, the bulk of it is fundamental. La majala lil fihi. You can't come and put forward your opinion. But there are also some issues in Aqeedah, very small, where there are difference of opinion in it. But the bulk of Aqeedah is fundamental issues. The same is, or the opposite is fiqh. Fiqh, on the other hand, the bulk of it, it's based on al-ijtihad. It's based on difference of opinion. And there are small amount which are in fiqh, fundamental issues. la majala lil fi. So now we want to ask ourselves this question. Al-da'watu ila Allah ta'ala, is it a qadiyya? fundamental matters in our religion or is it qadiyya fiqhiyya meaning there is ijtihad you can try this and you can try that the truth and the correct opinion inshallah ta'ala as the lecture goes on I'm going to explain I'm going to bring more evidences for is that it's a qadiyyatun manhajiyyatun wa laysat qadiyya fiqhiyya and even if you try to put it into fiqh and you say, no, it's a, it's a matter of fiqh, I will say to you, then it has to be from the masail fiqhiya, which are usuliya, issues of fiqh which are asal. That mata ma khalafati nasa wal ijma'a sarat manhajiyyatan yunkaru ala al-mukhalifi fiha. That 
the fiqh issues which if anyone opposes it they will be rejected not accepted from them for example someone can't come and say the five daily prayers for example dhuhr asr maghrib isha and fajr there is a difference of opinion whether it's obligatory or not because it's a fiqh issue no it's a fundamental issue even though it's a fiqh issue but it's a fundamental matter and there have come many masa many nusus in the sunnah also in the uh, aqwal of the sahabas and the tabi'in and the tabi'in which spoke against those people who oppose fundamental matters of the religion based on their opinions and as i said to you a da'wah ila allah if i said it's a qadiyatun manhajiyya and it's a fundamental matter and you oppose it with your opinions and your speculations and your stances then it goes against these verses that I'm going to mention. And Imam al-Bukhari, he chapter in his Sahih, a chapter where he called it, Babu ma yudhkaru min dhammir ra'i wa takallu fil qiyas. And then under that he brought the ayah, wala taqafu, he said, la taqul, ma laysa laka bihi ilmu, that which you have no knowledge of. Don't say what you have no knowledge of. He, so he chaptered the chaptering, he called it, Babu ma yudhkaru min dhammir ra'i. This chapter is, rebuking speaking against opinions and overburdening yourself to do analogies to oppose the quran and the sunnah you're striving to do qiyas that goes against and he's talking about al-qiyas al-madhmum and al-ra'i an opinion that goes against the what the quran and the sunnah then he brought the ayah to support that wala taqfu wala taqfu it means a la taqul don't say مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ And Bukhari is very well known to do this. In his Sahih, he brings a chaptering and then he follows it up with a hadith to support the chaptering. And then he brought the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As in that chaptering. Where Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As in رضي الله تعالى عنهما he said, سَمِعْتُ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ I heard the Prophet saying, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْزِعُ الْعِلْمَ بَعْدَ أَنْ أَعْطَاهُمُوهُ Allah is not one to remove knowledge after he has given it to the people in tiza'an walakin yantazi'uhu minhum ma'a qabd al-ulama'i bi'ilmihim but the way Allah removes the knowledge is by removing the people of knowledge they die and they pass away so does the knowledge fayabqa nasun juhalun yustaftawna fayaftuna bi-ra'ihim ignorant people are asked questions and they come forward and they answer those questions based on their opinions look at their hadith the hadith has come in many different wordings. Like in Imam al-Bukhari, you specifically chose this wording because of what? فَيُفْتُونَ بِرَأْيِهِمْ فَيُفْتُونَ بِرَأْيِهِمْ means they give fatwa based on their opinions. فَيُضِلُّونَ وَيَضِلُّونَ they, So they, become, they misguide other people and they misguide themselves. So what is the problem with these people after the ulama and the people of knowledge pass away and they die? The problem with these people is that they come forward, they position themselves in the place of the ulama and the people of knowledge, the people come up to them and ask them questions and they give fatwas based on their opinions. They misguide themselves and they misguide those people around them. Abi Wailin, he said, Qala Sahl ibn Hurayfin said, رضي الله عنه, Ya ayyuha nas O people, ittahimu ra'yakum, suspect your opinions ala deenikum. Rather than sus being suspicious about, about the Quran and the Sunnah and the religion, be suspicious of your own opinions. Ibn Shihab, bin, Ibn Shihab al Zuhri, he mentions that Anna Umar ibn al Khattabi, radiyallahu anhu, qala wa huwa ala al minbari, that Umar ibn al Khattab said on the pulpit, Ya ayyuha nasu people, inna al ra'ya inna ma kana min Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam musiba. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's opinions were correct. لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ كَانَ يُرِيهِ Because Allah was the one who used to show the Prophet the right from the wrong. إِنَّمَا هُوَ مِنَّ الظَّنُّ وَالتَّكَلُّفُ But from us, الرَّأِي, opinion, from us is speculation. That's what it is from us. And Imam Al-Bayhaqiyu here, he commented on it, which is very important to mention. He says, وَإِنَّمَا أَرَادَ بِي What Umar intended by the statement of his what Umar meant by this Bayhaqi says is that he says 
الذي لا يكون مشبها بأصل it is the opinion that is not based or grounded with text it's just from a person's mind he has no evidence to support this opinion so if it's a ra'i that's based on nas or ijma then inshallah ta'ala is praiseworthy umar radiyallahu anhu also said iyyakum wa ashab ar-ra'i stay away from people of opinions Again, I, all these quotes and these references I'm giving, they are all trying to point out the person who opposes the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma in matters that the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma have shown a person opposes it based on their opinions. A person who's giving da'wah, okay, my brothers and sisters, who is not following the Quran and the Sunnah, nor is he following the Ijma. He's using his what? He's using his opinion. So all these quotes apply on him. Yes, I do agree to, to one thing that I haven't yet proven from the Quran and the Sunnah and I will inshallah, I'll give many evidences that the Quran and the Sunnah have already set the path for da'wah ila Allah, how, she, how it should be done and the manner it should be done. And then the Prophet ﷺ was guided step by step from the day Iqra came down until he passed away, alayhi salatu wasalam, he was told what he can say, what he can't say. I'm going to prove that inshallah ta'ala from many evidences. Many evidences. And I'm also even going to prove the Prophet wasalam, when he sent companions to go and travel and to give da'wah, that he didn't just tell them, use your opinions. He actually told them what to say, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, which proves my point that a da'wah to ilallah ta'ala is a qadiyyatun manhajiyya wa laysat qadiyya fiqiyya. Umar radiallahu anhu here he says إياكم وأصحاب الرأي stay away from people who use their opinions again remember the kalam of Imam al-Bayhaqi rahimahullah it means those who oppose the Quran and the Sunnah with their opinions it doesn't mean the qiyas al-Mahmud the qiyas which is praiseworthy where the person couldn't find any evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah and they use their opinion because they have been ahli al-ijtihad they go and they look at the Quran and they extract a ruling from it we won't say that Umar said this about you and the, the, the ayah وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ We won't say that because that is correct. They're not opposing the Quran nor are they opposing the Sunnah. But if the person is not, he's going against the Quran and Sunnah. The Quran and the Sunnah has said, so have said something and the person is choosing to do something else. إِيَّاكُمْ وَأَصْحَابَ الرَّأِي You fall under the people of Ar-Ra'i. Umar said, فَإِنَّهُمْ أَعْدَاءُ السُّنَنِي They are people of what? They are the enemies of the Sunnah. Why? أَعْيَتْهُمُ الْأَحَادِيثُ أَنْ يَحْفَظُوهَا فَقَالُوا بِالرَّأِي فَضَلُّوا وَأَضَلُوا They were not able to memorize the hadith. They weren't able to understand the hadith. So what did they do? They just used their opinions. They misguided themselves and they also misguided other people. Think about this quote of his. You find a lot of people today in the da'wah use their own opinions and their own personal inclination what they like when the Quran and the Sunnah have already said about this particular issue that you're not allowed to do you're not allowed to do this the Sharia is clear and it's crystal clear the Quran is clear in this issue the Sunnah is clear in this issue you find a person who would use his own opinion and his knowledge of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is what? very little so the statement of Umar anhu, you can see it very clear on a lot of people. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Laysa That there is no year that comes except the year after it is more worse than it. He said, La aqulu aamun aamun amtaru min aamin. ولا عام أخصب من عام ولا أمير خير من أمير ولكن ذهاب خياركم وعلمائكم ثم يحدث قوم يقيسون الأمور برأيهم فيهدم الإسلام ويثلم He said I won't say to you when I said to you that there won't come a year except the year after it is worse He said I don't mean by that, that year the rain is going to be less than the year before it No that's not what I mean and I'm not going to say the greenery and the vegetations are less this year than it was last year. That's not what I mean, that one year is worse than the other year. What I mean, by, and I don't mean by that a ruler, okay, ولا أمير خير من أمير, or that one Amir is better than another Amir. Are we all together? Look, Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, he came before Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. And Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was better than him. 
So no, not one leader will be better. It could happen that a better leader comes after. But what I mean that one year is worse than the other year is وَلَكِنْ ذَهَابُ خِيَارِكُمْ وَعُلَمَائِكُمْ Your scholars, your righteous ones, your wise ones will pass away. They will go. ثُمَّ يَحْدُثُ قَوْمٌ And then what will happen? ثُمَّ يَحْدُثُ قَوْمٌ A people will come about. يَقِيسُونَ الْأُمُورَ بِرَأْيِهِمْ Who would look at matters with their own opinions. فَيُهْدَمُ الْإِسْلَامُ وَيُثْلَمْ Islam will be destroyed and crippled. That's what those people will do to Islam. They're using, it feels good. We weighed up masalih and the mafasid. Masail law urida ala umar. If these matters were presented to Umar, lashawara bihi al Badr, he would have put it forward to the people of Badr and said, What should we do in it? You find one individual, not much knowledge, making decisions on the da'wah of Allah, according to the path of Allah. Making big decisions for the da'wah and the way it should go and the direction it should go. It reminds me of a statement I read once from Abdul Rahman ibn Yahya al Mu'allimi. He said, That this person, this person will come and people of no, no value to, to the deen, they would come and they would put these matters forward and look what it does to Islam. It will cripple it, it will harm the deen, it will harm the da'wah for many years to come. Awf ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu, he said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, he said, Taftariqu ummati ala bid'in wa sab'ina firqah. He said that the Prophet ﷺ said that my ummah will be divided in 70 odd numbers. Okay? A'adhamuha fitnatan, this is another wording. A'adhamuha fitnatan ala ummati, the worst, and I want you to ponder, the worst people, the ones who have the greatest fitna on this ummah is who? Qawmun yaqeesoon al-umura bi ra'ihim. Say people, who would start using their own opinions. Again, I keep repeating this point. It means, الرأي, the opinion, متى ما خالفت النص والإجماع. Whenever it poses a text, النص means الكتاب والسنة, and it poses إجماع, consensus. They will come, they will give their opinions when there is a نص, when there is إجماع in the مسألة. They will push forward their opinions. أعظمها فتنة على أمتي قوم يقيسون الأمور برأيهم. What will they do? فيحلون الحرام ويحرمون الحلال. They will make halal what was haram, and they will make haram that which was halal. They're not making it on a religious jihadi issue where they look at the مسألة and it's a نازل من النوازل and they um yeah and they have the ability to do so. No. Please ponder on this hadith with me, my brothers and sisters. Those of you who are in da'wah and those of you who are planning to do da'wah. تفترق أمتي على بضع وسبعين فرقة أعظمها فتنة على أمتي The great, from the 70 odd number, 70 odd groups, the Prophet is saying أعظمها فتنة The one that's most فتنة is who? على أمتي قوم يقيسون الأمور برأيهم They will put their opinions forward. فَيُحِلُّونَ الْحَرَامَ وَيُحَرِّمُونَ الْحَلَالَ Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahu Allah, he said, when he commented on this hadith that Imam al-Tabarani narrated in his Mu'jam, uh, and also Imam al-Bayhaqi in his Madkhal ila sunan Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, وَفِي ذَمِّ الرَّأِي آثَارٌ مَشْهُورَةٌ There are many texts that speak against, use an opinion from an Umar wa Uthman wa Ali wa ibn Abbas wa ibn Abbas wa ibn Umar it has come from all of them wa ghayrihim and other than them wa kadhalika ala at-tabi'in ba'dahum bi ihsan it also has come from the tabi'in who came after the sahabas who followed them in good fiha bayan an al-akhdh bil ra'yi yuhallil al-haram wa yuharrim al-halal where the opinion is making halal haram and haram halal there are many texts that have come speaking against this from the Sahabas, such as Umar and Uthman and Ali and Ibn Abbas and Ibn Umar, and from the Tabi'in. وَمَعْلُومُ Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, what is known is, أَنَّ هَذِهِ الْآثَارَ الذَّامَّةَ لِلْرَأْيِ لَمْ يُقْصَدْ بِهَا إِجْتِهَادُ الرَّأْيِ عَلَى الْأُصُولِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ 
والسنة والإجماع في حادثة لم توجد في كتاب الله ولا سنة ولا إجماع ممن يعرف الأشباه والنظائر وفقه معاني الأحكام فيقيس قياس تشبيه وتمثيل أو قياس تعليل وتأصيل قياسا لم يعارض ما هو أولى منه until he said وإنما القياس والرأي الذي يهدم الإسلام ويحلل الحرام ويحرم الحلال ما عارض الكتاب والسنة أو ما كان عليه سلف الأمة أو معاني ذلك المعتبرة ابن تيمي رحمه الله he says that the, the, the رأي that the Sahaba spoke against, Umar and Uthman and Ali and Ibn Abbas and the Tabi'een spoke against is that which is in opposition, not the one that's, he said that is not the one that's based on ijtihad that goes in line with the Quran and the Sunnah and Ijma' or doing, uh, coming with a ra'i fi haditatin lam tujad fi kitabin the Quran didn't mention it, the Sunnah didn't mention it wala ijma' there's no consensus on this issue مِمَّنْ يَعْرِفُ الْأَشْبَاهَ وَالنَّظَائِرِ Which is the point I want you guys to ponder here with me. Who is allowed to do a ra'i? Who is allowed to do that ijtihad and even strive? He says, مِمَّنْ يَعْرِفُ الْأَشْبَاهَ وَالنَّظَائِرِ The one who knows the masail that look alike and the masail which are different. He can tell the furuq يعني what they're different in and he can also tell what they are similar in. وَفِقْهَ مَعَانِ الْأَحْكَامِ And he understands أَحَادِيثُ الْأَحْكَامِ and آيَاتُ الْأَحْكَامِ So he's read آيَاتُ الْأَحْكَامِ and he's read a hadith al hakam ayat al hakam for example abu abdullah al qurtubi's tafsir book is one of the books that speak about hadith al hakam and also abu bakr ibn al arabi and, and and their likes you read those books he has read the, he's read the ma'ani al hakam hakam here is ayat al hakam and hadith al hakam hadith al hakam is what abu dawood tirmidhi ibn majah and nasai bukhari and muslim have also a hadith al hakam even though their kutub is jami' he has read this stuff that individual فَيَقِيسُ قِيَاسَ تَشْبِيهٍ وَتَمْثِيلٍ So now he's doing a ra'i and ijtihad, so he does qiyas. أو قياس تعليل وتأصيل He uses the different forms of qiyas. Look at that. قياس لم يعارضه ما هو أولى منه The qiyas does not oppose that which is more befitting than it. What's more befitting than it? النص والإجماع He doesn't go against it. He's also a person who's allowed to do it. وَإِنَّمَا الْقِيَاسُ وَالرَّأْيُ الَّذِي يَهْدِمُ الْإِسْلَامَ The qiyas and the ra'i that destroys Islam وَيُحَلِّلُ الْحَرَامَ وَيُحَرِّمُ الْحَلَالَ is what? مَا عَارَضَ الْكِتَابَ وَالسُنَّةِ It goes against the kitab and the sunnah. It also against, goes against, he said, مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ سَلَفُ الْأُمَّةِ It goes against the pious predecessors. So based on that, my brothers and sisters, da'wah, مَمَنْهَجُ الدَّعْوَةِ لَيْسَ مَحَلْ اجتهاد. It's not based on اجتهاد. How is it based on ijtihad? How can it be? How can it be based on someone's opinions and how he sees it, when there are nusus from the kitab, yani the Quran or Sunnah, all of which clarify how to give da'wah? Inshallah, Taala, I'm going to bring those. And the imma of our time, the great scholars of our time, when this issue of is manhaju da'wah is it mahalu ijtihad or is it not? Our the imma of our time. All three of them were asked about this issue, was brought to them. Is manhaju da'wa wa wasailuha, is it tawqifiyya or not? The method and the way in order to give da'wa, is it based on text or is it ijtihad? You can look into it yourself and see what's right from what is wrong. You're independent, you can do independent reasoning. Is it that or is it this? The scholars of our time, such as Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, Sheikh Muhammad Nasiruddin al Albani, and Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymin, Hatta Sheikh Salih al Fawzan, all of whom it was put towards to them, and they were asked, and they all gave the opinion and that fatwa that it is tawqifiyyah. All of them. So, based on that, brothers, then, if we say that manhaju da'wa wa wasailuha is tawqifiyyah, the meaning to that is it is not permissible then. For a person to say, I'm going to only call to virtuous actions, fadailul a'mal, and that's all I want to focus on. And I'm going to stay away from a tawheed and calling to sunnah because it causes disunity and disagreement and it causes furqa and khilaf amongst the Muslims. We'll say, la yajuz. La yajuz. Because manhaju da'wah is what? Manhaj tawqifi. It's based on text. Also, a person is not allowed to say that I will call to da'wah by protesting. And that's the method I'm going to be using. Or a person who says, 
I want to call to the path of Allah wa ta'ala by focusing on purely politics. I don't want to talk about Tawheed and the Muslims' issues and what Muslims disagree and the views of the Mubtadi'a and the people of the Sunnah. I'm not going to focus on any of that. I'm just going to focus on the outside enemy, the non-Muslims. That's all I'm going to focus on. None of that is allowed for you. Why? Because manhaju da'wah is tawqifiya. You can only do what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. It is also not permissible for you to say that I am going to focus purely on just uniting the Muslims under one banner. That's all my da'wah is. I only focus on I'm going to focus on increasing the number of people that follow me. So my numbers have to grow, 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 go far. So I can reach more people. I'm going to focus on that. It's based on text. Which prophet, which Nabi said, I'm going to focus on the increasing the number of people. Rather, all they focused on was two things. The message and how they convey the message. It's also not allowed for you to follow means of free mixing and say, oh, I'm going to bring men and women in one place in order to give da'wah. لأن المنهج الدعوة is what? توقيفية. If the Nas, the Quran and the Sunnah have prohibited free mixing of opposite genders, you're not allowed to come and say, I'm only doing that because the Maslaha تقتضي ذلك. That the Maslaha calls to this. Or I'm going to play music, okay, in my, uh, in my videos because it's going to benefit the people. All of this, it goes against what we just mentioned about manhaju da'wa, it's tawqifiyah, textually based. And all of those things we mentioned, it goes against the Quran and the Sunnah, and as we're going to mention, the ijma'. As for those were all wasail means, there is something called wasait. Wasait is not what we're discussing, which is using modern technology to project all it does it just projects what your message is so television for example using that radios back in the days using uh podcasts using uh youtube and channels like that this is no discussion has ever come regarding the wasait but there has been discussions from the ulama and the people of knowledge as I mentioned to you Sheikh Muhammad Nasiruddin al-Albani when he was alive Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Ubaz Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymin Hatta Sheikhuna Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan all of whom said wasailu ad-da'wa and the manhaj of da'wa it's tawqifiyya and it is not tawfiqiyya tawqifiyya and tawfiqiyya tawqifiyya means it's textually based you have no rights to suggest anything no one wants to hear what you have to say follow and adhere and submit. Tawfiqiyah means I can see what's fit and I'll determine and I will choose. Let me go through some of the verses inshallah ta'ala that proves that masailu manhaju da'wa it's tawqifiyah and not tawfiqiyah. Let's look at it min jihati anna da'i yattabi'u fi da'watihi al-minhaj alladhi arshadahu du'atu ilayhi. The person has to follow the path written for him. Allah says in the Quran, Udu'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hasanati wa jadilhum billati hi ahsan. Basic studies of Usul al fiqh, what do we learn? We learn from this ayah, it says, Udu'u ila sabili rabbika. Call to the path of your Lord with three things. Bil hikmati with wisdom. Wal maw'idati al hasana, which is the second. And the third one, which is, wa jadilhum billati hi ahsan. It's a command at the beginning. Udu'u, you're being told what to do. No suggestion. You're told, Udu'u ila sabila rabbika bil hikmah. Use wisdom. Wal mawidati al hasana, a good reminder. Wajadilhum, debate. And all of this is in accordance to the person you're talking to. Some people are very gentle, or you just have to use his wisdom, take them out, and etc., and talk to them uh, in a gentle way, or do good for them, and they will take it. Another person you do is reminder for them. And a third person is وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِهِ أَحْسَنَ Again, we're going to explain that the hikmah in da'wah is not for me and you to choose what's hikmah, my brothers and sisters. The Prophet ﷺ was taught the hikmah of da'wah through the, the 23 years of his prophecy. And we're going to see that inshaAllah ta'ala. Look at what Allah said to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ شَاهِدًا وَمُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ وَسِرَاجًا مُنِيرًا 
Allah is talking to Nabi like Muhammad. He's saying to him, Ya ayu an Nabi, yani Nabi Muhammad, Inna arsalnaka, we sent you shahidan, you're a witness, wa mubashiran, to, you give glad tidings, wa nadiran, and you warn. No da'i can, can, can come and say, I am only, I give glad tidings to the people. I bring positivity to the people. Wa nadiran, this is the da'wah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. You need to warn them of a danger that's coming their way. Which you also witness you witnessing what the people are doing and you remember that they are either going to be a witness against you or you're going to be a witness against them وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ you're calling to who? Allah or your organization or yourself وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ you're calling to Allah تبارك وتعالى بإذنه وسراجا منيرا the ayah tells us what the Prophet ﷺ's da'wah should be like also Allah says in another ayah which is the ayah I mentioned أُدْعُوا إِلَى سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَوْعِضَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ وَجَادِلْهُمْ وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنٍ In another ayah, Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ هَدَى اللَّهِ فَبِهُدَاهُ مُقْتَدِي Nabi Allah Muhammad is being spoken to. Many prophets were mentioned. Allah is saying to them, that's their guidance. These prophets, that's what their guidance was. فَبِهُدَاهُ مُقْتَدِي Muhammad, follow their guidance. And from their guidance is the way that they gave da'wah. The ayah is general. Also Allah says in another ayah, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ This is my path. The da'wah has a path. Set Ad'u ila Allah I call to Allah So one So first we learn from the ayah That the da'wah has a path Qul hadihi sabili ad'u ila Allah I call to Allah It's a path You're calling to Allah Ala basiratin You're calling to Allah with insight, knowledge Ana, me And what? Wa mani taba'ani And those who follow that path in da'wah Idam da'wah is following Not trying and testing وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ إِغْزَوْتِلِ إِذَا اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِ This is my path. It's a path again. مُسْتَقِيمًا Straight path. فَاتَّبِعُوهُ Follow it. Brothers, I ask you a question. The Prophet Sallallahu path, was it just his knowledge and his actions or even his da'wah? Everything. Everything about him is his path. عليه الصلاة والسلام. He said, فَاتَّبِعُوهُ Follow my path. Follow the way I what I believed. Follow the knowledge I spread. Follow the actions I did. Follow the statements I said. All of that. وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلَ Do not follow the other paths. فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ It will take you away from my path. In another ayah, Allah says, كُنْتُمْ you are خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ the best nation ever sent. Of course, this is talking to the companions. Awalan, first, ibtida'an is the sahabas. And after that, it spills over to the rest. What do you do? This is the quality of the da'i. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof. You tell the people that, that which is good. You enjoin the good. You call to the good. Wa tanhawna anil munkar. And you warn against evil. A, a da'i who the people in front of him are doing munkar and he's watching it, that's not da'wah. You, you have to tell the people the good and you also warn them against the evil. وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You believe in Allah. In another ayah, Allah says, look what he says. الَّذِينَ إِنْ مَكَّنَّاهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ The people who we will, we will make them firm on this earth. هَا أَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ They established a prayer. وَآتَوُوا الزَّكَاةَ They give the zakat. وَأَمَرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ They call to the good. وَنَهَوْا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And they prohibit the evil. The part I want from the ayah is what? If you want Allah to give you tamkeen on this earth, the path to be firm on this earth, as a da'i, you have to understand it is what? Establishing the prayer. So you need to call the people to pray. You need to tell the people, give zakat. You have to tell them that which is right. وَأَمَرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Command the people the good. وَنَهَوْا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And warn the people from the evil. Tell them to stay away from it. In another ayah, Allah says, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى Help each other upon piety and good, not evil. We're not going to help each other on evil beliefs. If someone has a corrupt ideology of the deen. I support him. I aid him. I encourage people to go and benefit from it. When he has a corrupt belief, it's not وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى It means good and piety is what you aid one another in. Allah is saying وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ In another place Allah says لَا خَيْرَ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنْ نَجْوَاهُمْ إِلَّا مَنْ أَمَرَ بِصَدَقَةٍ 
So what are you going to command the people? Bisadaqatin aw ma'rufin aw islahin bayna an-nas wa man yaf'al dhalika bitira'a mardati Allah fa sawfa nu'tihi ajran 'azima. In another place Allah says ya ayyuhan nabiy jahid al-kuffara wal munafiqin wa ghlub 'alayhim. The jihad here on this ayah it was in Mecca. This ayah came down in Mecca, not in Medina. So it wasn't talking about jihad as-silah, it was talking about jihad al-lisan, the tongue. Which shows that harshness sometimes is required. So here we learn sometimes what is needed is al-ghilva, harshness. Also Allah Ta'ala He says, Do not obey the liars. So you hear something on the radio or the news and they tell you something. And they're not Muslims. Don't believe them. What do they want from you? They want you to come closer. This is a common thing. That they want you to move away from the principles of your deen. So that then you can go astray. That's what they want from you. Don't do that. Allah is saying subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another ayah Allah says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ Which is now the other side of being gentle and soft. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ Allah is telling the Prophet here to be gentle. He's telling him, do not be harsh and tough. And if you are, لَنْفَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ The Sahabas would run away from your surrounding. So what do you do? فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ Ask forgiveness for them. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ Ask Allah's forgiveness to be, to be sent on to them. وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ Consult them in matters. Don't make your own decision. Consult them. هذا لِرَسُولِ <laughs> That is for the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام. Then what do you think about us? The Prophet had the revelation back in him. مع ذلك Allah is saying to him وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ Consult the people in the decisions you want to make. So if a person is in da'wah, he has a circle of people he consults. He says, I made this video. I, made, I, I, wrote, I wrote this book. Can you look at it, Shaykh? Can you look at it, brother? Can you give me your opinion? I want to know. فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ When you finally make the decision now, فَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ Rely on Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهِ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ In another ayah, Allah says, يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولَ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Obey Allah. Obey His Messenger. Obey those who have been made place power over you. فَإِنْ تَنَازَعْتُمْ When we dispute one another, فِي شَيْءٍ when we dispute another, nakiratun, it's an indefinite here. So what does it show? Umum, it shows generalization. So if we dispute each other in anything whatsoever, فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ Bring it back to Allah and His Messenger. If you believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment. إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ This is the quality and the characteristics of the da'i. ذَلِكَ that which has been mentioned. خَيْرٌ is better for you guys. In another ayah, Allah says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا We sent فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ And every nation, we sent a messenger to them. What did he say to them? أَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ Worship Allah alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَجِتَلِبُ الطَّاوُوتَ And stay away from everything that is worshipped other than Allah. In another place, Allah Ta'ala, He says, فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ ظَهِيرًا لِلْكَافِرِينَ Do not be a supporter, one, a spokesman for the disbelievers. وَلَا يَصُدُّنَّكَ Do not stop them, do not let them stop you from what? عَنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ بَعْدَ إِذْ أُنزِلَتْ إِلَيْكَ Once it comes down on you and it's revealed on you, do not let them get between you and the Qur'an. وَدْعُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكْ Call to Allah and His Tawheed. Call to Him. وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Don't be from the mushrikeen. All of those verses, brothers, wallahi, the whole entire Qur'an, I can bring many ayats from it. How can then someone say that the path of da'wah is, ij- is, is, is ijtihadi? The Prophet told every way he has to, who he needs to talk to and who he, what he needs to say and how he needs to say and what is being told to him. Abdullah ibn Abbas, anhuma, he mentioned, أنه قال لما بعث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم معاذا نحو اليمن When the Prophet said Mu'ad to Yemen What did he say to him? إنك تقدم على قوم من أهل الكتاب Mu'ad, you're going to come to a people of the scripture uh, Call them to the path of Allah Is that what he said? He didn't say that He told him step by step what he needs to do He said فليكن أول ما تدعوهم إلى أن يوحد الله تعالى Let the first thing that you call them to be to single Allah in worship. Look what the, the Prophet then said. فَإِذَا عَرَفُوا ذَلِكَ If they recognize that, if they affirm that, 
فإذا عرفوا ذلك فأخبرهم أن الله فرض عليهم خمس صلوات في يومهم وليلهم وليلتهم Tell them that there's five daily prayers that is obligatory on them day and night ظهر عصر مغرب عشاء فجر they need to pray all those five daily prayers فإذا صلوا if they pray معاذ فأخبرهم tell them now أن الله افترض عليهم زكاة في أموالهم تؤخذ من غنيهم فترد على فقيرهم Also, once they pray and they come with those five daily prayers, now you need to mention the next point, which is what? That there is zakat upon them. What does the zakat consist of? What is it? Wealth that's taken from the rich and is given back to the poor. فَإِذَا أَقَرُّوا بِذَلِكَ If they affirm all of that, فَخُذْ مِنْهُمْ Take the wealth from them. وَتَوَقَّعْ Avoid كَرَائِمَ أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ Don't take the best of their wealth. Take that which is in the middle. Don't take the best of their wealth. They've got camels, don't take the best camel and don't take the weakest, da'if one. Take the middle one. Now I want to ask you, brothers and sisters, look what the Prophet here is doing, alayhi salatu wasalam. He sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal to Yemen. He told him the people he's going to meet. They are Ahlul Kitab. Now this is how your da'wah. This is what you call to. How can the da'wah then be ijtihadi? It's fair to say from this, فَالدَّعْوَةُ قَدْ رَسَمَ طَرِيقَهَ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ The Prophet in the Qur'an they set that path for us how to give da'wah. Our salaf, our pious predecessors, min al-sahabati wa tabi'een wa atba'ihim radiyallahu anhum ajma'een, they showed us how to also give da'wah from Abu Bakr onwards. So we say the statement of Imam Maliki rahimahullah, la yasluhu akhiru hadhihi al-ummati illa bima salah bihi awaluha fama lam yakun yawma'idin deenan la yakunu liyawma deena. لا يصلح آخر هذه الأمة. What does it mean? That the later generation are not going to be righteous and upright and steadfast إلا بما صلح به أولها except that which made the early generation righteous and pious. فما لم يكن يوم إذن دينا. What wasn't a religion that day لا يكون اليوم دينا. It won't be a religion today. The da'wah that wasn't done at that time will not be. That's the muqaddima and the introduction I wanted to talk about inshallah ta'ala which is to end this long discussion of I've been given da'wah and I've done my ishtihad and etc. Or these are the mistakes that we made in da'wah. The reason why you made these mistakes in da'wah is because you didn't follow the Quran or the Sunnah or the consensus that were there. So now inshallah ta'ala I want to go to usulu da'wah, the fundamentals of da'wah. And that is, and one ayah actually summarizes it for me, so I'm going to focus on this verse, inshallah ta'ala. And this verse, subhanAllah, my brothers and sisters, it's at the ending of Surah to Yusuf. So somebody has to read the story of Yusuf, alayhi salam, and what he did uh, as a prophet, and uh, understand what this verse is talking about. Yusuf, alayhi salam, the da'wah that we know he gave was tawhid. If you look at Surah to Yusuf, that's what you find. I have not seen anything else that Yusuf السلام, preached in Surah to Yusuf other than Tawheed. You don't know anything else about it. Not that he didn't. But in Surah to Yusuf, when the two men asked for the interpretation of the dream, and Nabi Yusuf السلام, he first, before he interpreted the dream, he went into Tawheed. أَأَرْبَابٌ مُتَفَرِّقُونَ خَيْرٌ أَمِّ اللَّهِ يعني many idols and gods that are worshipped besides Allah يعني he went into Tawheed and explained it to them and then after that he told them he told them Nabi Allah Yusuf he told them that now this is the interpretation of your dream حتى look Nabi Allah Yusuf because we have people who give da'wah today and they, they believe the way that they want to do da'wah is they want to go against governments and that's what they want to focus on Yusuf alayhi salam he was actually under a non-Muslim ruler. Yusuf never became in charge of Egypt. He was given a position below the position of a non-Muslim ruler. Which is, his da'wah wasn't to bring this guy down and to go into power. That wasn't his da'wah. That was tawheed, pure tawheed that he was calling to. The point I'm trying to say, my brothers and sisters, is this ayah is a conclusion of the entire surah. قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين. And this ayah, my brothers and sisters, is fair to say that it is ayah 
that mentions the usul of the da'wah. And what is it? The first thing it mentions is al ghayatu min al-da'wah. What's the objective of the da'wah? What is the, why am I calling? What is my purpose? What am I trying to achieve from all of this? al ghayatu min al-da'wah, what does it say? Adu'u ila Allah. استحقيقوا العبودية لله تعالى وحده وتنزيه عن عن الشرك. It is to purely give to Allah تبارك وتعالى servitude. يعني purely we surrender ourselves to be servants to who Allah سبحانه وتعالى and we put Allah تبارك وتعالى as our master, the one who deserves to be worshipped alone, and we stay away from shirk. قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله. The first thing, الغاية من الت من الدعوة is calling to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Not subscribe to my channel and follow me and all of that in, with the intent of you want people to follow you and you want atba' and you want all of that. So, ad'u ila Allahi. The ayah also says at the ending, wa subhanallah wa ma ana min al mushrikina. Exalted is Allah wa ta'ala and I'm not from the mushrikin. Tariqu da'wati wa sabiluha. The ayah also teaches us the method and the way to give da'wah, the path, which is what? It's to follow the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. What did Ayah say? هذه سبيلي my path. أنا ومن تبعني also says. So the da'wah is following the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. That's what Ayah says. قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله. That's the first one, which is الغاية من الدعوة. And the طريق of the da'wah. What does Ayah tell us? It's اتباع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم is to follow the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and also to follow Nabi Yusuf because Ayah came down on him. So if he says follow Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. And it's also in Surah to Yusuf, it means to follow all of the Prophets. هذه سبيلي underline that. أنا ومن اتبعني also underline that, which is to follow the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام. So da'wah is to follow the Prophet صلوات الله وسلامه عليه. The third thing that the, the ayah tells us is أوصاف الداعي. What is the description and the quality that the person who's giving da'wah should have? And that is al-ikhlas. Which is what ad'u ila Allah. Brothers, I'm not calling to myself. Sincerity, he's calling, he purely just wants to call the people to Allah. See? Also, the quality of the da'i is what? Ala basiratin, he has knowledge. Al ilmu shar'i. He has knowledge. He has understanding of the deen. You can't. Why are you giving da'a if you have no knowledge? If you have no knowledge, why are you giving da'wah? Da'wah is not for the ignorant people. Are we all together, brothers? Da'i, standing up, teaching the people, calling, debating atheists and agnostics and Christians and Jews. That individual has to have knowledge. Belligu anni walo ayah does not apply to that person. A person who's opened a YouTube channel, who's debating atheists and Christians, who's giving lectures, reminders, di- discussing topics, he has to have. The ayah is profound because it didn't just say, Adu'u ila Allahi ala ilmin. It didn't say that. He said, ala basiratin. Basira is more detailed knowledge, which is you have insight, deep understanding. That's the quality a da'i needs to have. Let's go back to the first one, which is ghaya to da'wah. What's the objective of da'wah? The objective of da'wah, as I said, is tahqiqul ubudiyati lillahi ta'ala wahdahu. الشركي, it is to call to Allah's worship alone. How is it possible that you've been a da'i for 10, 20, 30, 40 years and you have no lectures, no reminder, no, you don't discuss tawheed and shirk. You don't talk about that. For whatever reason it is, that goes against ghaya to da'wah. My brothers and sisters, you can't, there's no way to justify this one. Because Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنْ اعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَرِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ Calling to Tawheed, my brothers and sisters, it's an obligation and every single da'i to do. Once you take this position and you have knowledge, it's a must for you to go and call to a Tawheed and warn against shirk. You have to. Allah says in another ayah, فَإِنْ أَعْرَضُوا فَقُلْ أَنْذَرْتُكُمْ صَاعِقَةً مِثْلَ صَاعِقَةِ عَادٍ وَثَمُودٍ إذ جاءتهم الرسل من بين أيديهم ومن خلفهم ألا تعبدوا إلا الله. It's saying إذ جاءتهم الرسل رسل من messengers. What were they saying? ألا تعبدوا إلا الله. 
There is no prophet, my brothers and sisters, who came who never called to Tawheed. There is no prophet who came and said, I'm going to avoid Tawheed and Shirk. I'm going to focus on Fada'ilul A'mal and I'm going to focus on this and that. And I don't want to call to Tawheed and Shirk. Also Allah said in another ayah, وَذْكُرْ أَخَا عَادٍ إِذْ أَنْذَرَ قَوْمَهُ بِالْأَحْقَافِ وَقَدْ خَلَتِ النُّذُرُ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا الله. To call to Allah alone. In another ayah, Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ in another ayah, Allah says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةَ In another ayah, Allah said to the Prophet, يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُدَّثِرْ قُمْ فَأَنذِرْ وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ وَثِيَابَكَ فَطَهِّرْ وَالرُّجْزَ فَهْجُرْ ما معنى وربك فكبر. Glorify your Lord with Tawheed. That's what it means, وربك فكبر. عمر بن عبسة السلمي رضي الله عنه a noble companion he said قال كنت وأنا في الجاهلية أظن أن الناس على ضلالة before Islam I thought all the people upon misguidance وأنهم ليسوا على شيء and I believe the people upon nothing why وهم يعبدون الأوثان I recognize they're all worshiping idols so I, I knew they were all misguided and everything and I knew these people what they're doing idol worship and everything problem these guys are upon misguidance he said فسبعت برجل بمكة يخبر أخبارا and I heard about a man he's in Mecca he's telling people information and things he said فقعدت على راحلتي فقدمت عليه I got my riding beast ready and I came to him فإذا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مستخفيا I came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was hiding when he came and he entered the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said to him فقلت له ما أنت who are you the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said أنا أنا نبي I'm a prophet. I said to him, now Allah, the prophet is going to tell us what da'wah is. فَقُلْتُ وَمَا نَبِي What's a prophet? He said, أَرْسَلَنِ الله. Allah sent me. And then he said, okay, وَبِأَيِّ شَيْءٍ أَرْسَلَكَ What did he send you with? This is his message. He said, أَرْسَلَنِ بِصِلَةِ الْأَرْحَامِ وَكَسْرِ الْأَوْثَانِ وَأَيُّ أَحَدَ اللَّهُ لَا يُشْرَقْ بِهِ شَيْءٌ He said, I was sent بِصِلَةِ الْأَرْحَامِ to keep the ties of kinship. وَكَسْرِ الْأَوْثَانِ And destroying the idols. وَأَيُّ وَحَدَ اللَّهُ أَنَّ اللَّهِ is singled in worship. لَا يُشْرَكْ بِهِ شَيْءٌ That is not associated, associated partners with him. The Prophet summarizes his da'wah there. فَالدَّعْوَةُ إِذَنْ to say, I will not call to Tawheed and Shirk is against the path of our Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. فالدعوة كلها تدور حول تحقيق هذه الغاية. Our whole دعوة goes back to what my brothers and sisters is to fulfill this objective. This has to be the جهود الدعاء, the efforts of the دعاء. A داعي should not be just one who focuses on. يعني I'm going to focus on Muslims watching indecent videos and I'm going to focus on zina only and that's all I want to focus on. I, not those things should not be warned against. Don't get me wrong. It should be warned against it. But all I talk about is these communal problems. Look, my brothers and sisters, Mecca, we know our mother Aisha told us that the types of zina that were present in Mecca, she said it was of different types. The Prophet came to a community that were going around the Kaaba naked, naked. They could see each other's aura. The Prophet didn't address that at all in Mecca. For the 13 years he was there in Mecca, there was no mention of warning against zina, khamar, and all the other bad things that were happening. All that we know is two things were, were set, were sent, or were sent down. The first is Tawheed and the Salah. Salah is the, is the action of Tawheed, where the slave places his forehead on the ground and shows I'm a slave Ya Rabbi you're my master he takes the most honorable part of his body and he puts it on the ground is the time when the slave is the most closest to Allah that's the highest level of servitude those are the two that came down when the Tawheed became firm and it became strong what were the Sahabas like that what were they like brothers Lakin a da'i wants to focus on this little issue and he wants to focus on this issue and he wants to focus on this issue and leave off the thing that the entire da'wah is built on, the base that it's standing on, it's all avoided. 
The second asal that the ayah mentioned was what that I want to go back to is that it is based on tariqu da'wati wa sabiluha, the means in which da'wah is done. Okay? And that is ittiba'ul anbiya. You need to follow the prophets and the messengers. Wasayru ala tariqihim. And you have to tread on their path. Hadihi sabili. Look what the ayah says. Hadihi. What does it mean? It means the surah. It talks about usulu da'wah. Like al amru bit tawheed. Wasabri ala da'wah. Wal afwi was safri ala musi. Wasjtinabi al ba'asi wa gayri dalik. The whole entire story of Yusuf alayhi salam is what's, what's talking about it. So you have to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in what? You have to follow him Al-Bada'atu bima bada'a bihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You have to start with what he started with Wa taqdeemu ma qaddamu Whatever he put forward You need to put forward Wa ta'khiru ma akharahu What he put behind You put it behind So for example You have a gathering Where people have Problems with their tawheed Tawheed by the way brothers Is not just tawheed al-rububiyya Or tawheed al-uluhiyya So it's tawheed al-asma Wa sifat it's the haq of Allah, tabarakah wa ta'ala. So in your circle, you have all different tawa'if and groups in your place. And what are you talking to them about? You're talking to them about you need to stay away from uh, watching haram things online. You need to stay away from uh, uh, masturbation and you need to stay away from kadib and you need to stay all of that. And these people have problems with their tawheed and aqidah. This is not following the path of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. The Sahabas were in Mecca drinking and he never addressed that alayhi salatu wasalam. He first dealt with their tawheed and aqeedah, solidified that and everything else fell, fell, in, fell in line. Everything else fell in line. If you're dealing with feminism, if you're dealing with isms, all these isms, first of all, strengthen the tawheed of these people. Then the, the sister that you're talking to about feminism, she's already got a, a fundamental flaw here present, which is what? Not the rights of men and women. That's a, that's, it stems from a bigger problem, which is there is a deep-rooted belief, which is that Quran and the Sunnah are not a had where she needs to stop at. The rights of Allah, the haqq of Allah, that he can create and choose the judgments for the people, that needs to be a discussion. Also, the Prophet وسلم, and how what position does he hold and how we put him forward before our own desires and what we want also is a discussion that needs to be had. Fundamental issues need to be dealt with. Like if you don't put the things in the order that the Prophet وسلم, did, you're not going to bring any solution. You're just going to run around, as they say, like a headless chicken. Also, sometimes the Prophet وسلم, yes, he used maslakul ghilzati wa shiddati and he also used Times he was harsh alayhi salatu wasalam. Look at the khutbah to Jum'ah. What did the narration mention? Can the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasalam ida khutba? If the Prophet ever did a khutbah, ihmarra aina, his eyes would go red. Wa ala sawtuhu, his voice would go high. Ka'annahu fi, ka'annahu fi wasat al-jayshi. It was like he was in the middle of an army. Yaqulu lahum sabbahakum wa masakum. What was that? And he would be tough in the way he spoke. Some other times the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? Kadaba Abu Sanabil. Abu Sanabil lied, the Prophet said. And we all together, brothers. There was toughness and harsh positions that he took alayhi salatu wa at times. And the majority of his situations were, without a doubt, majority of it was al-afu wa safh. But you need to know, to put everything in its right place, you need to follow him in that. Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he called, if he saw a يعني, good that he can call somebody to, he called them to it. If he saw somebody do evil, he would warn them against it. Salawatullah. You need to follow him in all of that. You can't say, Aki, Wallah, if we address this issue, it's good. Al-Amr bin Ma'ruf wa Na'ali Mukha needs to be done. Of course, the way that the Prophet did it. The Prophet, way the Masalih and the Mafasid is in line with what the Prophet did. Also, you need to follow the Prophet ﷺ, the different types of people. How are you gonna how are you gonna deal with them? How are you going to deal with the different types of people? For example, the ruler, how do you deal with him? I take it from the Prophet. ﷺ. You can't say double standards, you follow here. No, 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 no. The messenger told me that when I deal with the ruler, I have to be like this. And he told me that when I'm dealing with the mahkum, the one who's ruled the people, the society, the community, I have to deal with them like this. I follow him in it. The Prophet told me the way I need to deal with a scholar and the way I need to deal with an ignorant one. The way I have to deal with a man and the way I have to deal with a woman. The way I have to deal with the one who's reached puberty and the one who hasn't. The way I have to deal with a Muslim and the way I have to deal with a Kafir. 
The way I also have to deal with a Sunni Salafi and a person who's a Mubtadi'. The way I have to deal with a Muti'un, a person who obeys Allah and the one who's Asi. All of those, they're not double standards. It's just that the Prophet told you, you follow them in, you follow him in each one. Alayhi salatu wasalam. It falls under, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَلَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي Following the Prophet in it, alayhi salatu wasalam. Also, how do you fix problems in the community? I need to follow the Prophet a bit. So for example, if the ruler does a mistake, how do I address it? How do I go about it? The Prophet told us. If it's the society and the community, how do I deal with it? The Prophet وسلم, told me. I go to him and I say, Ya Rasulullah, what do I do in this issue? And the hadith is going to be given to me. How do I deal with individuals? How do I deal with jama'at? Groups? How do I deal with governments? How do I deal with women? How do I deal with females? How do I deal with close relatives? How do I deal with a, a person who's not f close to me, is far from me, who's a foreigner from me? And all of that, my brothers and sisters, we need to follow the Prophet والسلام, in it. What happens is that we choose what we want to follow the Prophet in and what not. And this goes against the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for his da'wah to be done. The third is the quality and the characteristics of the da'i. The first thing that's needed from the da'i is al-ikhlas, sincerity. Allah ta'ala, he says, وَدْعُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ Call to your Lord, إِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ هُدَىٰ مُسْتَقِيمٌ your da'wah means to call to Allah. Also, Allah says in another ayah, "Wad'u ila Rabbik, wa la takunanna min al-mushrikin." Call to your Lord and do not be from the pagans. Also, Allah says in another ayah, "Wa man ahsanu qawla min man da'a ila Allahi wa amila salihan wa qala innani min al-muslimin." You do not want from the da'wah that you're doing jahan, wa la manzilatan, wa la malan. You don't want position. You don't want recognition. You don't want wealth. That's not why you're in it. Also, you don't intend from the da'wah to make a jama'ah and a group. and a, That's not what you're there for. You're not in da'wah so people recognize your efforts and appreciate your efforts. You're not there for that. You're not also even there to give da'wah li takthir al-atba' to increase in the number of followers that you have. Alhamdulillah, wallah, I succeeded. This is my goal. I've always wanted to have a big following. It was my effort. It goes against the quality of ikhlas. The second quality that the da'i needs to have, the ayah mentions is ala basiratin, which is that the person has knowledge. I want you to remember this. Al-ulama humu du'at li'anna al-ulama'a warathatul anbiya. Just remember that. Put that in your head. Who are the du'at? They're the scholars. Why? Because who did the Prophet told us that I inherit the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What was the biggest job that the Prophet was doing? It was da'wah, my brothers and sisters. He was calling the people to the path of Allah from the day he became a Prophet. He became a da'i even before he was praying, alayhi salatu wasalam. 40, he went at the age of 40, before he fasted, he gave zakat, all of that, salawatullahi wa sallam alayhi, everything, he was a da'i. The minute that iqra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq came down, after that came down, ya ayil muddathir qum fa'anthir, wa rabbaka fakabbir, wa thiyabaka fatahir came down, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a caller. For those 23 years he was a da'i, he was calling. The people who can do his job are the people of knowledge. Because the Prophet told us, Al-ulama warathatul anbiya. That the scholars are the ones who inherit, huh? that inherit the prophets. Or that inherited the, the, the Nabi Muhammad. So some people what they did is they separated between du'at and ulama and talabatul ilm. Why? Why did they do that for? They did that because they want to get a position somewhere. So he said, I'm not a talib al-ilm. I'm not a alim. I'm just a da'i. La al-ulama humu du'at. The only people who should be the du'at are the people who have knowledge. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in the hadith of Darda, inna al-ulama awarathatul anbiya, inna al-anbiya lam yuarrithu dinaran wala dirhaman, inna ma warrathu al-ilm, faman akhadha bihi akhadha bi haddin wa firim. Also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he tells us in another ayah that the quality of the da'i is what? هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون. What was the the reason why Allah sent the messengers? هو الذي أرسل رسوله. Allah is the one who sent Nabi Allah Muhammad and all the other prophets. What did He send with those prophets? Ignorance, lack of actions. No. الهدى which is العمل النافع. ودين الحق which means uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, الهدى is العلم النافع. 
beneficial knowledge. And deen al-haq is al-amal al-salih, righteous actions. Those are the two qualities that the ayah is mentioning that the messengers were sent with. So who's, if you say Abu Da'i, whose position have you taken the Prophet? And then the Prophet had knowledge, beneficial knowledge. And he also had righteous actions. Why don't you have neither of the two? Or well, you've only got one. And a righteous action with no knowledge is uh, the path of the Christians. They acted with no knowledge. Also Allah says in another ayah, And like that call, be steadfast umirta the way that you were commanded. Steadfastness is not based on me and your desires and how it's steadfast. We have to take it from the Quran. And then da'wah is part of istiqama. Kama umirta the way that you were commanded. Don't follow your desires. Don't follow what? Your desires. Allah mentioned subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam tariq al-da'wah. And when Allah clarified the path of da'wah for the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he made him the imam of it. Allah told him, this is the path of da'wah and you are the imam for it. Allah says, وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ نَافِلَةً وَكُلًّا جَعَلْنَا صَالِحِينَ وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا Allah said, we made, or we gave, Ishaq and Ya'qub, nafila. And then Allah, Allah Taala said, we made them uh, salihin. Then Allah says, We made them leaders that call to our path. To the Prophet, what did Allah say? With yaqeen is what? Knowledge. And the sabr is righteous actions. And Imam al-Bukhari, and every one of us here knows, and Imam al-Bukhari, he chaptered in his Sahih, a chapter where he called it, Babu al-ilmu qabla al-qawli wal-amal. That knowledge precedes speech and action. And then he brought the ayah, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَبَدَأَ بِالْعِلْمِ قَبْلَ الْقَوْلِ وَالْعَمَلِ And then Ibn, Imam al-Bukhari, what he said after that, he said, فَبَدَأَ بِالْعِلْمِ وَأَنَّ الْعُلَمَاءَ هُمْ وَرَثَةُ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ وَرَثُ الْعِلْمِ من أخذه أخذ بحذ وافر ومن سلك طريقا يطلب به علما سهل الله له إلى الجنة ما سهل الله له طريقا إلى الجنة بخاري brought that so he is telling you that before you speak and you call the people to the path of Allah before you do any actions what is needed from you is knowledge فبدأ بالعلم knowledge is what Allah started with فعلم no محمد so as a da'i you have to know فعلم have knowledge how many times have we seen people answering questions about the deen and um, putting themselves forward in discussions and debates and things like that where they haven't got the answer for it. And then the non-Muslim is in a situation where he asks the question and he says to the person, what do you think? And the person is like, I don't know. Or he tries to answer it and he gives a wrong answer. <coughs> so that's dangerous. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah, he said, Man amila bi ghayri ilmin kana ma yufsidu akthara min ma yuslah. If you start giving da'wah, you start acting with no knowledge, you're going to harm more than you're going to bring any benefits. That's what's going to happen. Fas'alu ahl al-dhikri in kuntum la ta'alamun. The only people who are allowed to be asked are the people of knowledge. A discussion and a debate is that this person is asking you a question. <coughs> <coughs> in a discussion and a debate This person is asking you questions And when they ask you questions If you're not from Ahl al-dhikr It's dangerous You have no knowledge You put yourself forward For people to ask you questions Very dangerous my brothers and sisters Da'wah is my brothers and sisters Hiya sa'yu li nashri deen illahi ta'ala Aqeedatan Wa shari'atan Simple terms, da'wah is to spread the religion of Allah in terms of aqidah. So what the person needs to believe. Wa sharia means what? In terms of the, the actions that the person needs to come with. Wa akhlaqanna means the mannerism. It's those three. Da'wah has to encompass all of that. You don't select, you don't choose, you don't say, I don't want this one, I want this one. You don't say that. 
And we need to remember that the ulama are the du'at. The people of knowledge are the ones who give da'wah. If we're working in da'wah, we have to gain knowledge in what we're going to call to. We also have to learn the people that we're going to call. Or else, my brothers and sisters, the harm that we bring to this deen is going to be very severe. I want to go into the last and final point of this series is that some of the deviations that happen in da'wah, some of the evil things that happen when those two points, I did an introduction and I also spoke about usulu da'wah. So the deviation that occurs in da'wah is either fil ghaya or fil wasila or fil sifati da'iya. The three that we mentioned from usulu da'wah, do you remember brothers and sisters? قُلْ هَذِهِ السَّبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Which was the ghaya, the objectives. Sometimes deviations happens in that. The, the, the person goes deviates in what they're calling to. Or the second one, which is the means. Remember we mentioned the means is to follow the Prophet ﷺ. So they go corrupted in that means. Or the characteristics and the attributes of the da'i is, is not intact. So he deviates in that regard. So it's one of those three. And not, none, nothing else that there is. It always falls under one of these three. Because these are the usul of the da'wah, the inhiraf and the uh, misguidance and the corruption, it falls into one of these three. So let's go with the first one, which is the ghaya, the objective. Some people, their da'wah is al-istikthāru uh, min al atba. They just want to increase numbers. They just want, why is that number not growing? Why is our numbers not Got reaching this not much Their ghaya The objective has now become Numbers In order to know That they are successful In their da'wah This man when he comes He packs out the place The venue So he is A good da'i MashaAllah Allahu Akbar And so he is considered A da'i Who's najih A successful da'i This is a deviation Haqiqatan Fil ghaya The objective has got, become corrupt why would numbers be considered the uh, d determining factor when the Prophet told us alayhi salatu wasalam, there's going to come a Nabi walaysa ma'ahu ahad. There's going to come a Prophet the day of judgment and no one's followed him. It's by himself. Does that mean that that Prophet fashal? He's fashil? No one would say that. Hasha, to say about a Prophet that he's, he failed. He did his job. Whether the people followed him or not, that's not his obligation. Asalat and brothers and sisters, we have to understand one thing. If your message resonates with the people and they like it or not, is not your job. As a da'i, you need to understand that. That's why a lot of people, and istikhtaru min al-atba'a, that's why they increase. I want to have more numbers and more people. Is they feel and they believe that um, I have to change the message. I have to fix this message so that it resonates with more people. And that's a problem. Wallahi, it's a big problem because it has no ending. Li'anna, the desires of people changes so fast and so quick. So every day you have to be changing and changing. And to please the people is ridha nasi ghayatul la To please the people is a goal you're never going to reach. So why please the people and try to increase in the love of the people and have more people love you? Keep the message pure and call to it. Second thing is, say it in the way that the Sharia ah told you to say it. This, that's all you need to observe. The message and how you project the message. So al-inhiraf and uh, al-zayg occurs when the ghaya changes. You find a person is, mashallah, this guy is a real da'i, how much? He's brought 2,000 people into Islam. Numbers only. And another brother, he brought five people into Islam or he's only brought three people into Islam. He's not, he can't, he's not the najah. But guess what? The three people he brought into Islam are tullab al مثلاً. Students of knowledge. It doesn't matter. The number is what people look at. And that's something that's sad. Uh, may Allah remove that from our heart the desire of number and the followers that we get. So the person, because he's the ghaya and the objective is this, he doesn't care about teaching. He avoids ta'aleem and tadris. He leaves all of that. Hey, na'amullah. 
ليس له اهتمام كبير بتعليم المدعو he doesn't want to teach the people knowledge علم because the knowledge of course it won't bring you all the people the knowledge won't bring you the people so no he doesn't want it also the person all he cares about is following a routine a schedule so he's working maybe for an organization he checks in and checks out he doesn't care okay about this is calling to allah this is my for him it's a routine it's a jadwal nine i come in five i need to go i'm a nine i come in and 12 i go after that no one can call me switch off my phone why well, i, I want to spend time with my family so it's what al iltizami bil judul wal wal barnamij i follow this barnamij i follow this program i follow this uh, schedule for at work khalas i have three uh, tv shows i need to do it khalas i do it i go I sign in i say what i have to say i leave there's no gaya bigger than that for the person and at the end i want my salary alhamdulillah i done my job that's one of the problems the second thing that happens in the gaya the first one was what Increasing in number The second thing that happens is Maqasid dunyawiya Osiyasiya The person has a worldly gain from it He goes in Because he wants to be recognized People are going to recognize me They're going to know I'm the, I'm the one Or there's a political benefit in, the, in, in it for the person So he wants to lobby and get in power And if you, a lot of the people when they come into da'wah, they get followers, followers, election, position. How How many people were in da'wah and then fell, went to politics? Many people. So it's a, the maqsad is not calling to Allah or anything like that. It's mas, yani, umur dunyawiya, manafi' dunyawiya, maqasid siyasiya. As for teaching and benefit the people, amru thanawi. Doesn't benefit. Okay, stop, 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 stop. These big books you're going to teach. No, no, okay, forget it. We don't want this stuff. The third problem that occurs when it comes to the objectives, which is one of the zayk, the evil things that happen, is the da'wah becomes specifically restricted to tahqiq husn al akhlaq and suluk and fadail al a'mal and zuhud and all of these things. There's no consideration for what? Calling to. قُلْ هَذِي سَبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ قُولِنْ تُوَ اللَّهِ يعني العقيدة and المنهج the person doesn't want to do that so the person's da'wah becomes كَحَالِ الصُّوفِيَّةِ وَجَمَاعَةِ التَّبْلِيغَ and all of that فضائل أعمال so you can sit in that gathering it's nothing wrong everything is nice very very good the gaya is not to call to tawheed and establish tawheed so the gaya becomes corrupted some people at the beginning they had good intentions they wanted to change things and fix things but then because they had qillatul ilm it harmed them and because they're not around the people of knowledge to always remind them and they're not under the supervision of the people of knowledge their ghaya changed the second zayk that happens is al wasila so we mentioned the ghaya the first one and I gave some examples of how it happens now I'm going to go into the zayk that happens and adab al-istiqama happens in the wasila, which is suluk al-maslak al-siyasi. The person follows a political ha, tariqa. If you listen to that person, you think, is he a da'i or is he a journalist? The khutbah min awwalihi ila akhirihi is talking about this government and this ruler and they passed this article and this law being passed and this and that. He's a journalist. <laughs> because he's يعني, calling to uh, the Muslims, الناس, to politics and getting involved. And he's coming and saying, you have to uh, do your voting and elections. The whole khutbah that was meant to be telling the people Tawheed and Aqeedah Sahiha and Salah and the things that they needed to know, that khutbah would not be it. You read a book that's written, you have to check the author again and say, isn't that Fulan? What's this book? All of it, min awalihi ila akhiri is, is a sira' lil wusuri ila al-hukum. This government and this law and this country invaded this country and this country done that and all of those things which are not what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's da'wah was built on. 
alayhi salatu wasalam. Do we ever know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up and gave khutbah and he talked about not Allah, he didn't talk about the aqeedah that the Muslims need to know and he, all he spoke about is the Romans and the Persians and all of that. The whole khutbah was about that. If it's not, then why are we doing it then? Another group of people, um, what they do is they call to al-aqeedah, sahiha, correct? And they call to the manhaj. But they never go and speak about other things that need to be told, told, spoken about. And other matters that are present. They don't address those issues. They don't mention those issues. They stay away from it. They only say aqeedah and manhaj is all I'm going to talk about. That goes against the da'wah. Because remember the da'wah is what? Al-aqeedah and al-manhaj. And also what? Al-shari'ah. And also al-akhlaq. So the person should extend to more than just according to Al-Aqeedah and Al-Manhaj. That is the base, the foundation that everybody, no one's allowed to leave that. But there's also more to the deen that you need to call to. You see somebody drink, eating with their left in front of you and you're at a table and he's eating with his left. You can't say, I only call to Aqeedah and Manhaj and I'm not going to what? Tell this person to eat with your right. I need to address these issues. Another way that um, the second, which is the Adam uh, al-Istiqama in al-Wasila occurs in the Wasila. The means is um, the person uses extreme, harsh, tough means all through the da'wah. The person just, you meet him, is harsh from the day you met him till now he's just been harsh, rude, disrespectful to any and everybody, name calling, f insulting everybody. This was not the da'wah of the Prophet ﷺ, as we mentioned. The Prophet ﷺ's da'wah was what? Salawatullah wasallam alayhi. It was maslak that he did sometimes was harsh. Like in the bulk, the majority of the Prophet ﷺ was فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ Gentleness. So what do these people use? They only use maslaku at uh, bil yad. Whenever they see something, somebody drinking with their left hand, they throw things out of their hand. It means if there's going to come greater harm from it, not let, tell the person, pull them over. Mention it to him in a gentle way. No, no, طريق العنف والغلو going extreme in takfir and in tadlil and also in tabdi' that goes against the way of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام. Like many Khawarij groups followed, and they treaded on that path. So those are evil paths that, يعني the وسائل corrupts the means and all of that. Also, they follow, for example, مسلك القصص stories. Al all day mention stories to people, and then the person, the people listen to stories. We're not saying stories are not uh, a way of يعني, the Quran. The Quran does mention stories. نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وكل نقص عليك من أنباء الرسل ما نثبت به فؤادك وجاءك في هذه الحق وموعظة وذكرى للمؤمنين. But there's also a storytelling. That your whole entire da'wah is revolved around. Khabbabi radiallahu anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu he said, Inna bani Israel, that bani Israel, lamma halaku, when they got destroyed, qassu, they became storytellers. The Prophet said this. Ibn al-Jawzi, he said, Wa inna ma waqa'a dhammu liha ula'i. The reason why these people are rebuked is because, li'annahum taraku kitab Allah, they left off the book of Allah, wa shtagalu bil qisas anhu. They focus on stories. So you find this brother, he will sit down, he, the whole masjid gives him the microphone and he mentions a story from the beginning to the end. Yes, خلاص, no ayah wala hadith. Qisos, qisos only. People like it and they listen to the story, they cry and they go and they leave. That's it. Abi Abdurrahman, he said, Anna Aliya radiallahu anhu ra'a rajulan yaqussu. Ali ibn Abi Talib Sulaiman sitting in a place, no ayah, no hadith. Ali listened to him for a little bit. He saw him as a storyteller. He said to him, do you know the abrogated verse and the verses that are not abrogated? Or the ones that abrogated and the ones that were abrogated? Do you know them? He said, no. He said, you're destroyed and you're destroying the people. Ali ibn Abi Talib saying this. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he said, Abi Bakrin, 
ولا عمر انما كان القصص زمن الفتنه the time of abu bakr and the time of umar they were storytellers how dare you think you can be a storyteller at the time of abu bakr and umar they were like that but when fitna happened and the sahabas يعني were little in number and the people causing more havoc such as the killing of uthman radiyallahu anhu zaman al fitna is the time when uthman was killed that time onwards it became a lot of fitna abu ali ibn talib's time his khilafa was يعني some of the muslims were cut off from him so he was weak this is when it came so remember this qisas storytelling and fitna are connected to each other ولذلك ابن الجوزي هذا كتاب كود القصاص وال وال والمذكرين يعني القصاص ستوري تيلرز والمذكرين ذوس هو ريمايند ذم اوسو جلال الدين السيوطي از ريتن ا بوك اون ريفيوتينج ستوري تيلرز ابو ادريس الخولاني ويسال لان ارى في طائفه المسجد نارا تتقض احب الي من ان ارى فيها رجلا يقص ليس بفقيه Abu Idris al-Khawlani said, for me to see on the side of the masjid, fire burning the masjid, I mean, the masjid burning is more beloved to me than to see a man who is sitting there who has no knowledge, is just telling stories. So, an entire da'wah of someone is based on just storytelling. as deviation. It goes against the means of the da'wah and the way it should be done. The third and the final, inshallah ta'ala, is the characteristics of the da'i the deviation that occurs in this is that he has bad intention he wants to get mashallah good money in his account so when he gets called for a lecture he puts forward a huh, the to-do list he says I want these things to be done for me all of these things I want this to be done for me I want my flight to be a first class I have to stay in this hotel because I have membership with them. So it has to be this hotel. I have to get a lounge. And I also have to get a suite in the hotel. I'm also going to bring all my entire family so they all, their, all their flights have to be paid. And also 20,000 or 15,000 or 30,000, whatever it is, has to be wired to my account one week before I come. That's what he wants. That's his conditions. That's deviation and corruption in this يعني, in da'wah. And he wants fame and recognition. Shaykh Sheikh Abdul Karim Al Khudair, he mentioned a story that shocked me. A person uh, put to the speaker, or no, the the what's it called, the 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 the, the person who's in charge of the panel, who's, the person who's introducing the sheikh to the to the to the microphone. A per, uh, one man he gave his biography to the. Uh, to the uh, uh, panelist, or not the panelist, but uh, the speak, the person who's going to introduce him. So he said, he put it, he gave it to him under the table. The man followed what you wrote. He followed it word for word, verbatim. And then he said, Inna lillahi shuna praise me like that. Shaykh Anash Abdi Kareem Kulayr mentions in one of his lectures. He gives him a letter, tells him, speak about me. Follows what you told him to follow. And then he says to you, Huh? You should have praised me like that. Or he said, some, so, Sheikh Abdul Kareem mentioned this. He said, some of them have even said when they've been praised, and he goes, Akhi, you missed out this information. All of this, my brothers and sisters, is su'uniyya. Let's call it what for what it is. is su'uniyya is a bad intention. Why do you care what people think about you? Why do you care what yeah, the position. And why, why do you care if people recognize your works and your efforts? Why, why does this all matter to you? The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wassalam, مَنْ طَلَبَ الْعِلْمَ لِيُمَارِيَ بِهِ السُّفَهَا أَوْ لِيُبَاهِيَ بِهِ الْعُلَمَا أَوْ لِيَصْرِفَ وُجُوهَ النَّاسِ إِلَيْهِ فَهُوَ فِي النَّهْرِ Anyone who seeks knowledge, his intent is that he can, the, the people are ignorant, he wants to boast and brag in front of their faces. Do you know what I know? <laughs> Allahumma barik. أَنَا مَوْسُوعَ I'm an encyclopedia in knowledge. I am this, I'm this and that. He wants to boast. He also wants to belittle the scholars and put them down and say, look at his fault, look at his mistake. So he can, I mean, see him push himself up. Or he wants to divert the people's attention to himself. That's exactly what YouTube is today, sah? And also all the social media outlets. 
to divert the people's face towards you so they look at you and they put mashallah that if you spoke about a topic that you wanted to speak about but another brother did it you're angry why is he taking my topic for it's my topic Somebody else said it. Alhamdulillah, it's fardu kifaya. If the obligation was taken by somebody else, You have something in your heart towards. Also, the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned, Inna One of the first people that are going to be judged the day of judgment is a what? From them is a what? A person who gained knowledge. He taught the people. He knows the Quran, he's teaching the Quran, he's teaching people's knowledge. He will be brought the day of judgment. And he will be asked about the blessing he's been given. And he will be then said to him, Fama amilta fihi. What did you do? Fama amilta fiha. What did you do with the knowledge that you had? He will say, Ta'alamtul ilma. Wa'alamtuhu. Wa'qara'tu fika al Quran. Oh Allah, I sought knowledge for your sake. And I taught it for your sake. I read the Quran. I, I taught it for your sake. You can't lie to Allah. Allah will say, Kadabta, you lied. وَلَكِنَّكَ تَعَلَّمْتَ الْعِلْمَ الْيُقَالَ عَالِمٌ You sought this knowledge so the people can say you're a scholar. وَقَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ And you read the Qur'an so you can be called a qari. فَقَدْ قِيلَ You got what you wanted. And then what? ثُمَّ أُمِرَ فَسُحِبَ عَلَى وَجْهِ حَتَّى أُلْقِيَ فِي النَّارِ You'll be grabbed, dragged on the ground and thrown into the hellfire face first. That's another thing. Also entering politics, my brothers and sisters, or bringing da'wah into politics, it, it harms a person's intention. Wallahi, take that from me. How many brothers, how many women, before politics had hijab and this and that, the brother had lihya, wa kada, mashallah, his thawb was high and everything, got into politics, got into this. His views change, his opinions change, he's relaxed, he's sitting with the opposite gender, shaking hands, holding hands. And all of that. So the da'i needs to stay away from all of that. Another thing, inshallah ta'ala, is my brothers and sisters, the da'wah should be taken by the people of knowledge. The second point, that I addressed the first point and I mentioned it, the second thing that harms the characteristics of the da'i is when he comes forward and he has no knowledge. And wallahi, brothers and sisters, many organizations, with wallahi, I've seen it, I've I used to be in the UK, I used to see it. They push people who are, they bring people into the da'wah or they push them into the da'wah who have no knowledge and no understanding. The matter of da'wah should be by people of knowledge. A person of knowledge has to either, you have to be, everybody who's giving da'wah generally has to be under a person of knowledge. The ulama and the people of knowledge, you consult them, you call them, you ask them questions. Like in to take over the da'wah other than the people of knowledge? Or trying to separate between al-ilm and da'wah and to say al-da'iyah and al-alim. That's a problem. No. Da'wah and the du'at are the same thing. If you look at many groups today and organizations you find, for them da'wah is purely al-wahv, reminders. Hot softening, bis. Iltizamul jadwal. Are you following the timetable? Have you have you have you come into work at nine o'clock? Ha. Ah, yeah. Have you left at twelve o'clock? Look at his schedule. It's not about the effort and the da'wah and the, none of that is looked at. What's looked at is following the jadwal. Also, if you have thirty th people you brought into Islam, you're better than the one who brought one person to Islam. It doesn't even matter the effort is exerted. The person who gives more reminders and has more followers from the reminders he gives is more appreciated than the one who's teaching kutub and ilm nafi'. This one, this one is appreciated. So what does the person, what, what happens here? The person, he doesn't want to seek knowledge anymore because he realized if the people of knowledge have not got much followers, they don't have much knowledge followers. So in order to give da'wah, I don't have to have knowledge. I just have to relate to the people. How many times do we hear that? I have to relate to the people. I have to be on the people's level. And that's intended by watering down a lot of the things that you should be holding on to. <clears throat> so the person says, I'm just going to give the people what they want. And seek teaching knowledge, 
teaching Allah and his names and his characteristics and his attributes, teaching the salah and the zakat and the psalm and the fasting and all the things that they need. One of the people I believe in the world, I believe who are the biggest du'at are the khutaba, the people who do khutba. Because the khatib, he gets the most people on Friday. Your masjid will be packed. You don't need to or you don't need to promote it online or anything like that. You pack it out. Your job as a khatib is that you select your khutbah. You select it and you choose it properly for the community. Every single khutbah that you give, it has to be a khutbah that brings the people back to Allah's oneness, worshipping Him alone and not associating partners with Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, one way or another. The teacher who's teaching in school can also be a uh, da'i, teaching the people through his classrooms where he sits down and he teaches the students and breaks down things for them. Authorship and all of these are ways of doing it. But my brothers and sisters, it all has to go to those points that we mentioned. Anything I've said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.